Well, good morning, St. Stephen's Bell Rose. I have to say this is a rather unusual way to connect with you guys, but uh, we are very keen um, to join with you from a cottage to talk a little bit about who we are and what we're doing and especially to say thank you to, um, to Andrew and the team there and for you as a church to say thank you for allowing us to partner with you um, in helping others. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the cottage for those who don't know us so well. Uh, you may remember Jen Lakos, who was the director um, up until January this year. Uh, there was a changing of the guard and myself, my name is John Parmodier, uh, and Karen Calvert, we took over uh, as directors of the cottage. And thankfully, Jen is still with us uh, as a, uh, an amazing counsellor. Um, she's still part of the team. But um, we wanted to join you this morning to talk a little bit about the ministry, um, what we do, how we do it, and also just give you perhaps a few tips on how we can look after ourselves and one another in these uh, strange and challenging times. So um, just a little bit about the cottage. We have, um, cottage has been around for about 25 years. It started off in 1996 in a counselling room in Narrabeen. And uh, there was a handful of uh, counsellors there. And um, in that year, uh, they saw, uh, I think about 300 and something clients in the year. And uh, that was the beginning of probably something that perhaps I didn't realise would be as big as it is today. 25 years later, we have 14 counsellors in six locations across Sydney. Three of those locations are on the Northern Beaches in Narrabeen, DY and Belrose uh, at St Stephen's there. But we're also in Linfield and Crow's Nest and Ride. And we're uh, looking to push even further west um, uh, across Sydney into the western suburbs as well. So the ministry is really growing. Uh, what we do is that we partner with churches to provide uh, professional counselling. I think the thing that makes us a bit more distinct um, as a ministry is that we want to make sure that um, finance is, is not a hindrance to people getting counselling. So at the cottage, the thing that sets us apart is that we, um, we will never knock anybody back uh, because of finances. So we can do that in two ways. We do that by, uh, first of all, by having a sliding scale, which means that if people are earning less, uh, then they will be charged less. And then we do it um, a second way by, uh, by providing um, subsidies for those who actually can't afford much at all. So whoever comes across our paths, whoever contacts the cottage and wants to get counselling, there is no, um, there's, there's very few barriers that will stop them from getting um, uh, professional counselling. The counsellors at the cottage are all Christian, um, which is important to us, but it doesn't mean that we only see Christians. We uh, will see, um, and, and hopefully we don't see just Christians, that we see people from across the board. So the thing that really, I guess, sets us apart from other counselling uh, providers is that we're all Christian and finances is not a barrier to you getting help. As uh, I might have said before, there's 14 of us, uh, counsellors and psychologists, and we're kind of growing and pushing into other parts of Sydney. Um, we are a non-for-profit charity, so um, we, do, uh, we do need to raise money uh, to be able to um, provide subsidised counselling. The subsidies themselves cost us about $20,000 a year, and of course there's other running costs as well. So um, we, we really value partnering with churches. All of our rooms across Sydney are in church buildings. So we're working with churches and uh, they provide the room, we provide the counsellor basically. Um, but we do need support. We do need financial support um, to be able to offer those subsidies. Um, and if you would like to do that, uh, Karen and I will be part of uh, a chat group after the service today. 
and uh, we would be very happy to field your questions. And of course, if you would like to um, talk in uh, um, in a less public forum, uh, of course, you can give us a call through the Cottage Counselling. If you go to the Cottage Counselling website, you'll get through probably get through to Karen, and we would be very happy to talk to you about how you can help us. But in a way, um, in a significant way, St Stephen's is already helping us by providing that wonderful room upstairs there in the attic. Uh, Karen and I both work there. Uh, well, we, we, in normal circumstances, we're there on a Wednesday and a Thursday. Uh, at the moment, where all of our councillors are working online. So thankfully, we can continue to work um, now um, uh, remotely and online. Um, but normally, uh, and into the future, of course, we will be back to face-to-face -face work. But right now, all the work is online. So having spoken a little bit about who we are at the cottage and what we do, uh, I thought I would just push into um, just, I think, some things that we can do to look after ourselves and each other in these really challenging times of COVID. Someone pointed out to me a little while ago that um, leading up to COVID was in actually also a really, really trying and difficult time for us as Sydney siders and across the nation of Australia. You might remember in 2019, we had severe drought. Um, towards the end of 2019 and into 2020, we had terrible bushfires. And Sydney and, and Sydney surrounds and New South Wales, we were already struggling. We were struggling for those who were suffering. Well, many people were impacted by the drought. Many people were impacted by the floods. And many people were impacted by the fires. And I think we all were, to some extent, um, watching those terrible scenes and even with Sydney covered as it was uh, in the smoke at the time. You might remember that COVID came on right on the back of that. So we'd already had what I would consider a pretty, a really difficult time as a city, as a state, and even as a nation leading up to COVID. And then of course, in February, 2020, COVID came on the back of that. So we're already in, in probably in a state of stress or many people were. Since then, of course, we've gone to another level and life has gotten a lot harder. So I just wanted to touch on a few things that I think might help um, in us looking after ourselves and each other. The first point I wanna make is that I think it's really important that we are honest with ourselves <clears throat> and with each other about how we're feeling in this time. There is a danger um, when we're struggling to, uh, to be thinking that we can't really complain because other people have it harder than ourselves. There are a lot of people, uh, particularly if you look internationally, who are struggling and doing it much harder than, than us. And that's true. You, if, you, if you look at uh, earthquakes in Haiti, uh, Afghanistan and all the, uh, all the um, struggles there, there's some terrible images uh, that we are probably most of us watching on the news. The thing is, whilst that's true, whilst it's true that other people uh, do pro have it harder than ourselves. In a sense, there's a little danger in that, in that we can invalidate how we're feeling uh, if we look, if we go too far with that idea. So in other words, I can say, well, yeah, sure, I might be, um, I might be lonely, I might be anxious, but who am I to complain? Because look at those people. And it's, it's not a great way to go because it invalidates our struggle it stops us from talking about it. Um, and it may even stop us from listening to other people's concerns and struggles. So whilst it's true that other people have it harder, uh, we just have to be careful that we don't invalidate what we're going through. And we really need to be honest with ourselves about if we're struggling with fear, if we're isolated and lonely, if we're anxious, we do need to uh, we do need to face that stuff. We do, and, and especially we do need to talk about that stuff. So just be uh, careful that you don't inv invalidate yourself or invalidate somebody else um, because other people might have it harder. Uh, it's a bit of a trap and it's very important that we validate. The word validate I think is a really important word because um, validation means that what you're saying is important. What you're thinking and feeling is important. And I want to hear that. So let's make sure that we validate our own 
thoughts and feelings and we validate each other's because it's sending a message that what you're going through is important. And the opposite is true, that if you say, well, you know, that's okay, but, you know, what about everybody else? Then you're actually invalidating. So I just want to make the point that it's really important that we are able to express and talk about what we're going through with somebody on the phone, um, you know, in person, whatever, but we cannot deny the stuff that we carry. And if we do, we'll, we'll struggle even more through that denial. So firstly, just to encourage you to be honest with yourself and, and to be honest with somebody or somebody that you trust around how you're feeling in these COVID times. Secondly, and whilst it might sound a little bit um, contrary to what I'm saying, I also think that it's important that we're thankful in these times. Uh, whilst I at times uh, uh, definitely struggled through these uh, COVID weeks and months, um, I have been at times really frustrated, really angry, and, and I've had to process and talk about those things. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that at some other time during the day, I can be actually quite thankful about uh, my, own, my own health, the, whole, the health of my wife, my children, um, my, my work situation. Uh, there are other things that I can be thankful for um, during the day. So I'll often start my day um, thinking about those things and even talking to uh, my wife about them and just remembering what the good things as well. But at the same time, uh, not at the same time exactly, but later on in the day, I can still be honest about my frustrations and my anger and some of the harder feelings, even the sadness, uh, some of the harder things that I talk about um, and process. So whilst they might sound um, opposites, I think they're both true and I think they're both important, that we can be honest with our struggles, honest with our difficult and harder emotions, um, but also we can at times be thankful for what we do have in these times. So just make sure that you are able to, if you can, talk to someone that you trust and, and, and don't carry those burdens and those difficult feelings alone. The third thing that I wanted to mention that, that uh, I think will be helpful in these lockdown times is kind of the trap, or what I kind of call the what if trap. I think sometimes um, I've noticed over the years in terms of uh, counselling that our anxiety can be spiked if we get drawn into this futuristic thinking and asking ourselves these what if questions. What if questions might be like, what if lockdown continues into 2022 when we're in this for another six months? Well, the reality is I can deal with lockdown today. I can do things today around uh, lockdown and how I can look after myself and others. But if I push into six months from now and ask myself questions that in fact I can't answer, I don't know what I'm gonna be like if I'm still in lockdown in February. I don't know what I'm gonna be like if I'm in lockdown in Christmas. But, I, but what I can be drawn into if I'm not careful is thinking about those things and asking myself a question, what am I gonna do if? What if this happens? What if I can't see so-and-so? And what happens with um, our anxiety is if we start thinking like that, our body will react as if that's happening. So we can be thinking about futuristic problems and then our anxiety will react to that as if it's happening today. So the antidote to that, the antidote to the kind of problematic what if questions that we can't answer, these futuristic questions that we can't answer, is actually to bring ourselves back to today. Today is important. Now is important. So I can think about how I'm thinking today, what I'm feeling today, and I can be honest about those things. I can do things today that I can, that, that are proactive and helpful for myself or somebody else today, but I can't resolve problems of tomorrow. And the, and the strange and, and curious thing about these what if futuristic thoughts is often we'll get drawn into worrying about something that actually won't happen. So we'll worry or, or get anxious about something in the future 
that we think might happen. And I think more often than not, those kind of things don't happen, but we get very anxious as if they are happening. So this futuristic thinking, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about making plans and being careful and planning for the future. I'm not saying that, but I'm thinking about worrying about things in the future that may or may not happen. We can deal with today. We can't necessarily deal with something that may or may not happen in six months' time. There is um, a lot I could say about that because there's a, there's a whole bunch of teaching around what's called mindfulness. But mindfulness or a part of mindfulness is actually just exercising living in today, living in the moment. And part of that um, uh, strategy, if you like, is around just bringing yourself back to the moment. If you're finding your thoughts and your anxieties and your thinking is too much in the future, you can bring yourself back to today by appealing to your senses. So that might be, um, it's, they're kind of called grounding exercises. Um, there are things like, um, if I appeal to my senses now, if I think about what, what I can hear now, what I can touch now, what I can smell now, then these are, these are asking, this is paying attention to my senses. And the obvious thing is um, that you can't be in the now and the future at the same time. So if you're, if you're finding yourself in that place of worrying about the future, you can learn to bring yourself back to the present moment. Sometimes just some slow, deliberate, deep breathing for a minute or two and listening to yourself breathe just brings you back to the moment. It slows you down. Appealing to your senses, your sense of smell, touch, sight, hearing, all those things will bring you back to the present moment and will, and will pull you away from what can be dangerous, sort of anxiety-driving, unhelpful thoughts about the future. So that's the third thing that might help you, um, perhaps something that you can put into practice and be thinking, there is a scripture, Matthew 634 that says do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself right each day has enough troubles of its own now there's a bunch of other teaching that you could that you can draw from that but essentially what that particular what that one verse verse 34 says don't worry about tomorrow there's enough to think about today which is true isn't it we can deal with stuff today we can i can i can do something about my struggles today. I can talk to someone today. I can process uh, what I'm going through today, but I can't deal with tomorrow and the unknowns of tomorrow. So just think about that and think about trying to stay in the moment. And um, obviously, we there's a lot more to that. Um, and I'm happy to talk about that a little bit more in our chat session after. Or obviously, if, if anxiety or anything is a struggle for you, then, you know, um, then seeing a counsellor is a really good idea. And obviously at the cottage, we would be very happy to see you. The fourth thing I want to mention is probably something that we all know, and it's kind of obvious, but I think it's really important to mention, and that is exercise and sunshine. The body, the way God made us, he has given us our own mood lifters. Our own mood lifters kick in. If we are in the sun and moving, um, our brain releases something called serotonin and our body releases endorphins. And these are, these are things that give us energy and lift our mood. So it's the body's way of saying, I'll, I'll pick you up. I'll lift your mood. I'll, I'll give you energy. And simply by being in the sun and exercising, our body will release the serotonin and the endorphins that will in fact give us energy, help us sleep and, and, and lift our mood. So there's this amazing inbuilt way of lifting ourselves when we need lifting. You know, we are not built uh, to be alone. We are built for community. And that's why this time is really challenging because we're not supposed to be isolated, but we are. We are. And, and, and we will we will be perhaps for a little bit longer, but we can do stuff today that will help us get through this, this challenging time. So just a, uh, obviously the sort of walking or exercising that you can do, 
try and get out and try and move your body and get in the sun and your body will say thank you and you will be given those natural mood lifters which will help your mood and your sleep and your energy levels. And finally, I just think the, the simple acts of kindness and reaching out to one another, which I know you guys have talked about um, as um, uh, before, just simple things like phone calls, texts, cards, gifts, meals, whatever it might be. I had a guy send me a text just yesterday. Actually, it's not a guy that I knew that well from my own church. And he just said, how are you going? Uh, you know, how, how, how do you manage with your work and with your family? And we just, we just texted back and back and forth for five minutes. And I thought that I, I could tangibly just feel better because I thought this guy has just reached out and he's interested in how I'm going. It lifted me. Another person um, about a month ago actually sent us a beautiful um, kind of meringue pie. Just, just ordered it from the, the, the shop and it got delivered. And it was just a random act of kindness. It lifted not just me, it lifted my whole family because we all, we all enjoy the cake. So there are, I just think, the, the, the ways that we can reach out to one another that might take, uh, it might be a walk on around the block or around the park for an hour or it might be a five-minute call or it might be a meal or a card. But something that says, I'm thinking of you, I care about you. We need to receive that and we need to give it. And we, whilst we might be locked down in our homes, we can still do community. We just do it differently. And whilst I know these are things that uh, have been talked about and it's important that we talk about it, but it's obviously really important that we do it. I found out towards the end of my dear mum's life that she told me uh, that she used to wake up in the morning, a lovely uh, Christian woman that she was. She used to wake up in the morning in the latter years of her life and say, God, who can I bless today? And I thought, wow, what a, what a question to ask yourself at the beginning of each day, just, just thinking about that. Maybe asking God to put someone on your heart or maybe just do it because you've already got someone on your heart. So these things are also, as we give, of course, that, that also lifts us. So I, don't, I know these are things that we have already thought about probably most of you already done, but it's, it's important that we keep doing it. So just to recap, really um, some, some things that we can do to help ourselves and each other. Let's be real. Let's be honest. Let's, let's validate ourselves and each other, each other's experience and, and be uh, present with one another. Let's remember to be thankful. Let's, um, try and stay in today. Today has enough challenges and things that we can do today and be careful of not pushing into tomorrow too much and, and, and increasing any worries or concerns or anxiety that we may have. Let's come back to the moment. Let's come back to today. Um, and let's not forget about just simple exercise and sunshine to get our bodies moving. And, and let's keep reaching out to one another and um, caring in small ways and in larger ways, depending on uh, how you want to do it. But it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. And I think there's something we can probably do every day to um, think of somebody else and bless somebody else. And I just want to, um, we will be available after the service um, on the chat, on the Zoom, Karen and I. We'd be very happy to answer your questions. Um, but we, we really want to thank um, St. Stephen's for 20 years of partnering with the cottage uh, and helping us do what we do. And uh, we're really blessed. We really enjoy being a part of um, what you're doing there in Belrose. And um, we want to say thank you and, um, and get through this time together.